<clears throat> hey, what's going on, y'all? Uh, it's your boy, uh, it's your boy Packer from the Rumble Room. Um, I didn't want to be long. I just wanted to uh, address uh, something, um, something that's been sort of uh, brewing in the in the Rumble Room for the past couple days. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> It's concerning an argument that G, uh, a gentleman by the name of Laron G. Con Campbell is making. All right. Uh, he argues that um, the Ashkenazim uh, are part, are the true children of Israel. Um, and where he gets this argument from, I, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I, there are countless Ashkenazi Jews who... I wouldn't say countless, but there's there's a considerable considerable number of Ashkenazi Jews that are on record um, who who will say we are not the people. <clears throat> I think um, I mean it ranges from politicians, it ranges from politicians to university a university professor. Um, uh, people in the media, um, they can people in the land. They can attest. There, pe- there is at least one guy in this group who can attest. No, I'm sorry. That's two people. I know two gen- two gentlemen who are who are Ashkenazi, who will say that the Ashkenazi are not the people. And G and I saw G Khan actually almost get into a back and forth with one of these gentlemen. <clears throat> um, I kind of don't want to. I mean, I mean, I could put their names out there. They're, they're Ashkenaz. There's, there's only there's only about there's only two that I know of in this room. All right. Um, and G Con went back and forth with one of them to argue that that guy, that the Ashkenazi are the true chosen people. Um. So I don't know where he's getting this. I don't know where he's getting the fervor to argue this. Um, it's clear the people are from Eastern Europe. And they'll tell you that. They hail from Eastern Europe. They don't speak. They don't. For many of you, I'm, I'm, pre, I'm preaching to the choir. But I, I just feel the need to get this on record for those who may not be up on the information. Um, this co- constantly uh, brothers and sisters coming into this faith, coming into this truth. And so while some many may know the know the information, others may just be sort of catching up to speed. So I wanted to go on record to sort of address what uh, G. Con was saying, Laurent Campbell, uh, and address this notion, this mythical notion of the Ashkenazi being the um, true people. OK, so there's lots of. Um, Evidence, geographical evidence, historical evidence, okay? And um, just for starters, <clears throat> I wanted to point all those who may not be up on the information. For every, this goes out to everybody. You know, you're invited to um, to explore the units. I've placed some units. It's kind of, uh, it's kind of a nerdy thing I did. I'm a, I'm a bit of a nerd, got to admit. Um, and... Because I, I felt that this information was important. It seems to be like certain Christians seem to think that it's barber talk, barbershop talk. That you can actually make a case for the Ashkenazi, Ashkenazi Jews actually being the children of Israel. And in order to make that case, you have to be wholly ignorant of the historical, geographical evidence that exists out there. Now, I know a gentleman like G. Khan, he spends most of his time in the truck. It's really difficult for him to sit down and read a book. He's got to concentrate on that road. He's got to get that load from, from point A to point B. And, you know, aside from his Bible, I'm pretty sure, like, you know, I would imagine that he doesn't have much time to sit in front of a book and read. 
because that's how you're going to get this information. <clears throat> uh, so for so Gcon, uh, I'm not sure if you've arrived yet. I tagged your name. This especially goes out to you. This invitation. Um, what I'll do is I'll uh, turn my camera around. Give me one second. That way I can, I'm going to show you how to get this so you don't miss this, G. All right. Pass, put a few resources in your hands. That way <coughs> you can inform yourself. All right. Informing oneself is empowering oneself. All right. When you don't have power, you're weak. You don't have strength. You can't, your legs aren't strong enough to hold in a conversation when you're talking about what exists, okay? So, let me start this over. We're at the Rumble Room site, okay? I made units, okay? Units, all right? Now, when you click on units, you get a whole list of, you get a list of units. <laughs> These, um, basically, they are, f f um, I don't know how you describe this here, but I guess it would be sort of like a digital folder, all right? And what you can do is you can go through and it's got information. All right, so <clears throat> Gcon, this goes out to you. I, I've opened, let me see. It's, so when we're talking about the Ashkenazi Jew or Scythian Turk Khazar, All right, I've, I've pre-opened a, a window with the files in it. And if you go down, you will see certain resources that describe the history of the Ashkenazi Jew. The Ashkenazi Jew has been called, has been called the Khazar. Okay, the Khazar comes from the same place as the Scythian. Okay. See, the Khazar comes right in between here. Scythian is, this is a Scythian empire. The Scythian empire existed in a certain um, time period. The Scythian empire faded. And by the Middle Ages, the Khazar, the Khazarian empire was here. These are where the Ashkenazi come from. They know this. Okay. They know this. Perhaps G Khan doesn't know this. Okay, so how how why 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 would he why why wouldn't he argue what he's arguing now, right? He doesn't know that the Ashkenazi originates from this region, okay? Um, <clears throat> and I play some visuals of some Khazarians, some Scythians, all right. And we're, and, and I'm gonna kind of I'm gonna quickly briefly go through how I'm gonna quickly go through why G Khan. Is in other Christians, un, uh, other Christians that just do not have the information, they argue that the actual people, people like Jesse Brantley, Elas Craven, maybe Negetti Hawkins, even, they'll they'll argue that the the actual the people, the Ashkenazi Jews, are the actual children of Israel. But the but we know that historically, the the people in this region, all the way. Let's look at this on a map. Okay. Here's where the Scythian Empire, the Khazar, this is the uh, the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea, these two right here. And he, here are the Caucasus Mountains, all right? Um, and above this, these are where the Ashkenazi, the Khazar, the Khazarian Empire, the Scythian Empire came from. Now, in that video I just showed you, it's going to show how all those, how those people have descended Okay, and they're also called Turks, Scythian Khazar Turks. All right, that's what this is called. Ashkenazi Jew or Scythian Khazar Turk. They're called different things depending on the time period. Now, when you click on this video, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have a timeline on it. And it's going to show you <clears throat> how they started in one area, all right, and how they descended into this region where the sons of Shem were. Okay, if you read the book of Jubilees, it will talk about how the sons of Japhet went north. It will also talk about where the sons of Shem settled. And it was right across, right across all the way here. This is the sons of Shem lot, lot right here. 
okay? And then these, this is, we know, this is the land of Ham, okay? <clears throat> now, um, th this shows you the dispersion of the, of the Japhetic, of the sons of Japhet. It's going to show you how the Ashkenazim got to where they got, all right? How they arrived. This also, this deals with a more modern time period. You know, it's going to, you know, it's going to go back to 22 BC. Um, let me go to the Greeks, because that's a very important resource. So, in the list of those units, you'll find also the Greek Empire. And it's going to have a map, just like the Sons of Japhet. All right, just like for the uh, Indo-Europeans, it's going to have a timeline that's going to highlight all the areas of, of the Greek reign, the Greek empire. There's also the Roman empire. All right, this is going to show you how the Romans got into Africa. It was, it was the Phoenicians first. This was all owned by black people. The Romans didn't always own this. The, the Romans didn't always own this. We, you'll see that on the earlier dates, this will all be gone. It'll all be like this color. And then as the time goes forward, after the fall of, after the fading of the Greek Empire, then this starts to grow. This happened just after, maybe like we're talking about like close to first century B.C., this is new. And who was here before? We know that in the Bible, those who the, the people who ruled this region were the Tyrians. And the Tyrians were the Phoenicians. The Phoenicians are Canaani, children of Canaan. All right? <clears throat> so, thank you, Charles Amawako. I, I tagged Salam, um, and, and she got a good... She got a good uh, <laughs> She got a good lesson on this. I think it was earlier in the summer. Her and Lasagna were were go, running wild on the posts, uh, you know, a, a thousand posts a day talking about how, uh, talking about what the what the true Jews look like. And after this came out, after it, it came out that the Phoenicians ruled this region and how this was all this was all Phoenician, okay. Then they got real quiet. Isn't they haven't been the same since? They have not been the same since. Salon's been pretty. She left the actually left the room a couple times. Okay, so <clears throat> um, it wasn't until like just bef just before the um, be just before they took Israel that this started to grow. Go ahead and explore it. I invite you guys to explore it. Click on it. You'll see how the empire flourishes. But this. This, you know, when you start to look at how the Moors came about, and it talks about how the Jews were there long before the Moors came, you know, certain historical sources, you'll understand because the, the Phoenicians ran this whole region. When you talk about, when you talk about Venice, Venice, Venezia, Venezia means Phoenicia, all right? And they ran this whole thing. They had a nice little trade route from, from, from here to Africa, to Carthage. They ran this, okay? And, there, and as prophesied, okay, Tyre, Tyre's glory faded. If we're talking about, if we're, oh, yeah, there you are, Salam. There you are. Yeah, she's gonna, don't, don't be surprised about how she's responding, guys, because she's seen this before, all right? We've gone, me and Salam have gone through this before. All right, <clears throat> so um, so Tyre's glory faded. If you read the book of Joel, it talks about what was what was going to be due to Tyre. Oh, Salam, um, you know that I can't invite you in. Interesting, you can interesting that I, like I can't. You obviously can't join anymore, right? We, we, everybody knows that now. But that's an interesting timing, though, that you'd like to jump in. Okay, um, so, <laughs> so, uh, so we know that the Roman Empire <clears throat> is fairly new. All right, so go ahead and cl cl you can go ahead and explore that later if you want. I invite you guys. Now, at the more at, at more modern dates, you're gonna see the Turkish Empire grow. All right, this is a different video. All right, history of the Turks. 
Don't be surprised. You can do a comparative uh, analysis of this uh, of this video, and you can watch them side by side with the with the Jafet and see how they grow in similar fashion. All right, and they all go south. They all descend south. Right now, we're going to get into the prophecies that talk about that prophesy that these people would descend from the north to the south. Okay, we're talking about the children of Jafet. All right. And, you know, Gomer, Togarma, uh, Gog, Magog, uh, all in this region. Yavani, the Yavani. All right. The Italians and the Greeks. You see their name called Javan. They're called Yavan. It's Yavani. We know that the, that the letter J is, it's a new sound. And, a, and just for those who are, um, who want a little extra tidbit of information under their belt regarding the letter J and sound J, it's derived from the letter Y. And you see that in a lot of different languages. Obviously, Java, Yavin, Yavin became Javan. Okay? In Spanish, the same thing happens. Where, where, the region where my family is, uh, all throughout Central America and the Caribbean, you get, you know... You know, you know, you guys heard the saying when they say, uh, like a, and a Hispanic person says, oh, you don't know. And you say, oh, you don't know. You know, like that's because in Spanish, when you pronounce the double L, it often comes out like yo, like yo, yo quiero Taco Bell. They say yo, yo quiero. Like it's just, a, it's, it's a, it's a kind of a, a relaxed kind of way of, of pronouncing it. <clears throat> All right. Um. Different corruptions happen that way. Language morphs that way. Okay, so why d did we know that the people from the north would come from the south? Yes, we did. How do we know? How do we know? We know by the book of uh, Jeremiah. We, what we can do is we can start from what the Messiah said or we can go, to, go from, from Jeremiah. Okay, because this is both. This is talked about in Jeremiah. It's talked about in Joel. And the Messiah in his parable of the vineyard and also shortly after when he's talking about the coming of the Son of Man, he mentions, the, he mentions an army surrounding Jerusalem. Now this, he's not taking this up from anywhere, right? He's taking it from Daniel 8 and he's also taking it from Jeremiah. <clears throat> All right, so... Let's just hit let's just hit up the gospel since that's the that's the most familiar to everyone. Now, understand that this prophecy comes all the way back from uh Genesis. Genesis 9:27. It talks about um Jef Jefet being enlarged, pata, pata is the word, and pata means to be deluded, okay? Jephthah would be deluded. They would be deceived. And what is happening now? These people, many of them think they're the actual children of Jacob. And they're not. And they're fat. They've waxen fat. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so Genesis 9, 27. You can write that down. Uh, like take note of that. So let's hit up. Let's hit up the parable of the vineyard really quick to, to show that even the Messiah knew that these these Ashkenazi, these white Jews, these European Jews, were not the people that Israel would be taken over. Let's start with um, <clears throat> we'll go to Luke twenty, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna I'm just gonna I'm not gonna go through the whole thing because I don't want to take too much of your time, and I I just want to put the information in your hands so that you can connect the dots, and and hopefully hopefully G-Con can connect the dots as well. Um, to quickly recap, G-Con had a, um, had a conversation with, uh, with Sam Addison and, um, Yahu Yahukanan, uh, and, uh, brother Sam Addison tried to bring out some of these verses. Um, but G-Con, he, he, he is a headstrong brother to say the least. Um, and it's like when he has his idea set, he's just focused on convincing of the truth. He's not really He's not really focused on understanding what you say, even so that he can say, hey, this has a, a problem in it. When he hears things that threaten his own case, 
he gets boisterous and he starts to um, chant down his um, his um, interlocutors, the people he's discussing with, and it becomes displeasant. Okay, I recently posted a video between I and myself. We had a conversation last night, um, and you can hear him doing this uh, five minutes before I I um, uh, uh, dismiss myself from the conversation. He was pretty upset. And he knew I was on a timeline, and he actually cut me off before I finished my point. I, but I got just enough out, uh, and I think the, the 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 little bit that I did get out, it really upset him, and and it really tipped him over the edge when I said I was going to dismiss myself. Because D, D, you know, G kind of likes to he likes to have pushback, you know. So, okay, so um, G con um, went to Zechariah fourteen. Uh, and basically that prophecy talks about, um, um, it, it's a, it's a quite, kind of an overshot of the destruction that the judgment that's going to happen to Israel. And then it goes through the restoration, what's going to happen during the millennial reign. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I, so as my end point, as my final point, I said, g -Con, we know the people that are in the, if you go and watch the video, you'll see this. If we know that the people are, are in Israel state right now are not the people uh, of, of the biblical prophecy. It's not the Israel state is not the biblical prophecy fulfilled. And I pointed him to, um, Zephaniah three eleven, Okay. And Ezekiel 36, 26, seven. Um, I'm over here in Ezekiel real quick. <clears throat> and I'll, I'll read it just so you know, okay. Ezekiel thirty six twenty six. We'll we'll get to the the um, the Messiah sermon in a second. Very shortly. Okay, here we go. Thirty six twenty six. Ezekiel. A new heart I will give to you. I will give you, and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and give you a new a give you a, a heart of flesh. Um, yeah, I will take the, away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a, a heart of flesh. 27, and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my judgments, my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. Okay, this prophecy has to do with Israel restored. G. Khan doesn't spend a lot of time, a lot of time in the prophets. Once I brought this out, he started saying, okay, well, well what was the context? Uh, well, you should know the context. Okay. That that's a clue that a person needs to be silent. If they don't have a clue, you got to be silent. You got to take that information in because I might have some, might know something that may cause a change in your 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 case. But he fought it all the way through. Okay, let's go to Zephaniah. Okay, Zephaniah chapter three thirteen. The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity, nor speak lies, neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth, for they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. Salam, go ahead and ask your question if you're still in the room. Um, I'll, I'll gladly uh, address questions. Okay, so, so Zephaniah and Ezekiel attest that the restored remnant of Israel will not do any iniquity or speak any lies. Now, I told G. Khan that the reason why Ashkenazi are not the people, because they don't fit that. For the past three years, they have been um, hosting LGBTQ pride. Now, for those that don't know, maybe you're from a different country, maybe you don't understand, LGBTQ pride is a gay pride festival, a whole festival dedicated to gay pride, gay rights. Um, let's look it up. We're gonna, I, I, and I told everyone before I got off of GCon, before he cut me off, Google Pride Tel Aviv. All right, they already, I guess they already have the two, 2020 dates. Tel Aviv. Oh, and by the way, g -Con seems to think that the capital of Israel is Jerusalem. Oh, bless his poor soul. My guy drives, he drives all day. He didn't have time, to, he doesn't have time. He didn't have time to figure all this out. 
I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the capital of, Te of Jerusalem is Tel Aviv. Okay. Okay, so so they hosted it, hosted the gay gay pride in their nation's capital. Now, does that sound like the people who are supposed to be in Zephaniah 3.13 and Ezekiel 36, 26 through 7? I'll let you I'll let you guys confer amongst yourselves, all the Christians in the room. Okay? I wonder if G Con's listening. He, I saw him on a thread, and I also, he, you know, he re, he recently did a live. He's listening to gospel music. He's probably tired. Oh, shout out Brian Garcia. What up, Brian Garcia? Maybe you can re, maybe you can relay all this information at G Con. I tagged him, but he hasn't showed up. <clears throat> okay, so so we see that Israel state government. Who Gcon alleges is the restored remnant of Jerusalem? <laughs> They're celebrating gay pride. All right, in you know, you know, in spite of uh, Zephaniah three thirteen, Ezekiel thirty six twenty six through seven. Okay, so um, also, if that wasn't the worst thing you could have heard, um. Israel state government had been caught in a scandal. I, I forget what year it was. One second. But they were caught. I'm going to set the phone down real quick. They were caught in a scandal where it was discovered that they had covertly and also forcibly, they intimidated uh, uh, bait, bait, beta Israel women Falasha Ethiopian women to accept sterilize be, to be sterilized. They were um, they were chemically castrated. Okay, these women can no longer have children. They are barren until the day that they die. Okay, very very sad news. Um, the Guardian. Let me see if I can find this. Ethiopian um, and women. The chemical that they gave the women was called Depo Provera. And that's devilish. If, that's a devilish word. Depo Provera. It sounds like deprive. Okay, Depo Provera. I imagine Christians are leaving the room right now because that hurts. Like, damn, the Israelites are making good points. Ah. Ah, all right. So, all right. So, um, so these are the 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 publications. Israel admits Ethiopian women were given birth control shots, Depo Provera, contraceptive, long acting contraceptive. So it may not have been permanent, but but it's but obviously we can all agree that this is like grossly, um grossly I'm trying to think of good adjectives that communicate the point it's very it's unethical wildly unethical for a government to do that but many of these women were immigrants many of these women are poor so the government took advantage of them like di like bribing them if you want to get in the country if you want this and that you have to take the shot they don't like that the Ethiopian women are having babies they don't like it. Now, if these if these Ashkenazim were the true people and they accepted the Ethiopian Beta Israel as their countrymen, as their fellow compatriots, why would you do something so sinister as to as to lower the birth rate of women from your own nation? Is that righteous? Brian Garcia, Salam Alexandria. Is that righteous? Salam, you know, your mom's Ethiopian, right? I actually expected to hear more of you, more, more of an opinion from you. Okay. Haaretz. Haaretz. Very notable publication. The Guardian. Very notable publication. Okay, these aren't your run-of-the-mill garden variety blog sites. 
Okay, these are major publications. Independent British publication. <clears throat> okay. Now you have this uh this blog piece. It's this is not this is Times of Israel, but it's it's a it's an opinion piece. Okay. And it's only come out in, in the last the last year, <laughs> November 18th. This story has been brewing since 2013. So what I imagine is that there's somebody trying to do damage control. But they're late. They're late. All right. Oh, here we go. We got something from, oh, from the same publication, not a blog. The same publication, Times of Israel. Ethiopian women claim forced them to use birth control. Okay. Forbes.com. Huffington Post. Do you see this? Okay, so this is no this is no rumor. This is no rumor. Somebody tagged that that donkey. That donkey G con to get up in here and look at this. All right, <clears throat> so, all right, so, so these people are not, I mean, we could really wrap the session up at this point. I think we can, and that's why I wanted to get on here, and I, 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 I won't wrap it up, I'll go through the scriptures, but um, it's an easy, it's an easy fix, it's an easy cleanup this argument is, this silly argument that the Ashkenazi are the true children, and I'm thinking that you know, so much discussion has happened uh, since um, since the summer, since the spring. Um, lots of information has come out. Israelites are getting lots of information. They're, 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 we're growing stronger. We're responding. I'm seeing many people respond uh, in ways that I didn't see prior to this year. There's verses that we're reasoning from that the Christians are just not ready. All right, maybe I can go over those scriptures, but but I've seen a lot of change. Like Christianity is, the, I think we're almost at the point where Christian apologists, these so-called Christian apologists, are not going to want to talk to us. All right, brother Jay doesn't talk to me. He blocked me. He came in here. I think maybe a week. A week he was in here. I might be wrong. I hope I'm not. Maybe a week, maybe a week and a half, two weeks. And he came in. We talked. We talked on his channel. He invited me on his YouTube podcast. And that was the end. He's not going to talk to me anymore. Vocab does not want to talk to me. Vocab's in the room. He came in the room a couple weeks ago, maybe a week, week, week or two. He doesn't want to talk to me. Mike Pereira... As much as he had to say on Cherry Love's channel, how he thinks I'm a garbage debater, he doesn't want to talk. He doesn't want to come in here. He doesn't. He doesn't want to talk. And he doesn't. He doesn't want to have a balanced discussion. He only wants to. He only will 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 show up if it's if the scale is tipped in his favor. Okay, they're starting to retreat. Okay, Christian apologists are starting to retreat. And the more we insist on having these conversations, it's going to be punishing. It's already punishing. It's going to be so punishing that they're just not even going to want to hear it anymore. Salam has virtually disappeared. Matt Sali has virtually disappeared. Okay. Mr. Matt Sali, Mr. Uh, what you call it, Mr. Live a Day. You know, we used to get morning lives from Matt. He's gone. He didn't want to have a conversation anymore. All right. So, <clears throat> all right. So, just just gonna move along and hit these scriptures really quick. That way, y'all could uh, have the information. Um, <clears throat> so, the Messiah is speaking at the temple of of the Lord in Jerusalem. All right, and um, he goes into a parable that talks about um, that 
explains what's how Israel has treated its prophets and how it sort of rejected the idea of coming back to the law, statutes, and commandments. Okay, at this point in the captivity timeline, the you know, you know cited from Daniel two thirty-one through forty-five and Daniel seven. Okay, the image, uh, the head of bronze, which which uh, stood for Babylon, the. I think it was arms of silver or maybe chest of chest of silver and then arms of I'm not sure it's gold silver uh, brass then iron okay <clears throat> and so um, the gold uh, standing for Babylon the silver standing for uh, the Persians and the Medes the brass uh, standing for the Greeks and the Rome, the the iron, uh, all the way down to the iron mixed with clay is the Roman captivity. So three have passed, and now we are currently under Roman captivity, which is the last captivity that that the Messiah is talking about, and he's talking about the last days, and you know, and so he understands that because the last captivity, they're under the last captivity, then the end is nigh. Okay, so, but before. Uh, the end comes, the the land will be uh, dis uh, they will be dispersed. They will be disinherited from their land. Okay, so parable of the vineyard. Uh, I'll just I won't go through both accounts, but I'm gonna hit Luke and Matthew. I'll just sort of uh, touch on both. You can find these accounts in in Luke twenty, and then I think Matthew twenty one. We're reading from Luke right now. A certain man planted a vineyard, let it let it forth to lent it forth let it forth to a husbandman to husbandmen gardeners and went to a far country for a long time at the season he sent a servant to the husbandmen uh that they should give him the fruit of the vineyard but the husbandmen beat the servant they beat him and sent him away empty and again he sent another servant and they beat him and also entreated him shamefully shamefully and sent him away empty and again sent a third and they wounded him and cast him out verse 13 then the lord said of the vineyard what shall i do i will send my beloved son it may be that they will reverence him when they see him so if we're going to connect the dots right now the husbandmen are clearly the uh israelite leadership all right oh welcome we just finished talking about you Laurent. you'll you'll want to You'll definitely want to rewind this video after we're done, okay? <clears throat> so, um, so if you so connecting the dots, the the husbandmen are Israel's leadership. We're in Luke twenty right now. We're going over the parable of the vineyard, uh, Laron, uh, Gikon. So uh, the husbandmen are the Israelite leadership. The servants are the prophets. Okay, so the husbandmen, the Israelite leadership, have killed the prophets. Okay. That's the connection. The husbandman beat the servant, okay, killed the servant. And now uh, the, the, the uh, owner of the vineyard says, okay, I'll send my son. Maybe they'll respect him, okay? We're talking about Hamashiach, the Christ, okay? Um, those Christians called Jesus, Yahoshua, all right? <clears throat> so um, it says, but when the husbandman saw him, the son, they reason amongst themselves, saying, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him, that the inheritance may be ours. Okay. So they cast him out of the vineyard and killed him. What, what therefore shall the Lord of the vineyard do unto them? He shall come and destroy, them, destroy these husbandmen. Okay. And he shall give the vineyard to others. Okay. And... <laughs> And when they heard it, they said, God forbid. Okay, now at this point, the Messiah is speaking to the Pharisees. So he's he's giving them that low key, like, you know what I'm talking about. And you know what's going to happen to you. They know what's in the prophecies. They know Isaiah 63, okay? A very macabre description of what, of what the Messiah is going to do, okay? What the Messiah is, should I say, what the Messiah is capable of doing, all right? <clears throat> Um, it says, um, and he beheld them. He looked at them. He's going to drive the point home right now. What is this then that is written? The stone, which the builders rejected, the same is become the head of the corner. 
And he says, and so he's, he's uh, I believe that's a quote from Isaiah, maybe Isaiah 26. All right. Um, he says, whosoever shall fall upon that stone shall be broken. A very, that's a very violent suggestion. He's looking at these, these rich Pharisees, these powerful Pharisees who fear him, but they, they want a reason. They don't, want to, they don't want to respect him. They want to do away with him. And he understands that. He says, he looks at them. The stone which the builders rejected is the same as the headquarters stone. Whosoever shall fall upon that stone shall be broken. That's like basic, that's, that's like greasy talk right there. He says, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. That's greasy talk to rich men who are powerful, who can make things happen. All right. Very gutsy thing to do. Right. So and the chief priests, they got the point. The chief priests and the scribes the same hour sought to lay hands on him and they feared the people for they pierced. They perceived that he had spoken this parable against them. They got the point. Now, I'm going to just skip on over to Matthew just to make sure I didn't miss any details they pretty much say the same thing but actually matthew says add some really neat things okay and a lot of christians they use what's what's in matthew uh specifically versus matthew 21 43 all right uh so let's see we'll skip the the parable of the vineyard and we'll fast forward because it says almost virtually the same exact thing that Luke, that the account in Luke 20 says. You guys can read it. It's in Matthew 21, 33. All right. Uh, <clears throat> so actually we'll skip to the point where uh, the son comes in. 37. But last, but last of all, he sent unto them his son saying, they will reverence my son. These husbandmen, these husbandmen, these gardeners. But when the husbandmen saw the son, they said amongst themselves, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and let us seize on his inheritance. And they caught him and cast him out of the vineyard and slew him. Verse 40. When the Lord, therefore, of the vineyard cometh. Oh, so he asked them. He said, when the Lord of the vineyard cometh, what will he do unto these husbandmen? <laughs> so it's like a rhetorical question. And imagine what, what those Pharisees were thinking, all right? They say unto him, he will miserably destroy those wicked men, they knew, and will let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen, which shall render him the fruits in their seasons. Okay, so this is talking about um, after they're, they're, they understand that Israel is to be dispersed. Jesus said to them, did ye never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected the same is become the head, corner, head of the corner? This is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. Okay, he's asking if they read that passage. All right. Therefore, say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you. Okay, this is Jerusalem he's referring to, the kingdom of God. Okay. This is the kingdom of God, Israel. It shall be taken from, from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. Now, <clears throat> you know, when you talk to a Christian, that, you know, all the Christians are going to be quiet. When you read that verse and it says, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given a nation. You know, right then you can, you can ask the Christian, What's the, what kingdom of God is, is Jesus referring to? And then, the, and and a brother, you know, somebody like G-Con will be like, uh, 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 well, well, let's look at, let's look at another verse. Let's look at, uh, uh, let's look at. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, they're not gonna want to deal with that. The kingdom of God, verse 43, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. They're gonna say, oh, that's spiritual, but we know that that's not the case. We, we know that it's talking about Jerusalem, the city of God, kingdom of God. Okay. It says, and whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. And when the chief priests and Pharisees had heard, these par heard his parables, they perceived that he spake of them. But when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitude because they took him, took him for a prophet. So now, <clears throat> so, Jesus, so we have the Messiah who's made his point about how Israel's uh, due for punishment. All right, so let's... 
Let's skip ahead quickly to the chapters after. All right. Where, where the Messiah talks about armies will besiege Jerusalem. And then from there, we'll take a look at the prophets. I think that's good. That way the Christians don't, uh, you know, their head doesn't explode. You know, Christians know the gospel. So, you know, so that their head doesn't explode. We'll lead off from the gospels. Okay, so let's look at Luke. We'll go to Luke. No, yeah, we're gonna get there. We're gonna get there, Gcon. Um, the nation, the nation bringing forth fruit. It's not talking about the gospels going out to the Gentiles. It's talking about the. It's talking about the Gentiles coming into Jerusalem. Okay. Now I'm sure you're triggered right now, and you'd love to hop on and chant me down. But we're gonna move forward. So, Luke twenty one. Luke 21, all right? So we're talking about the coming of the Son of Man. This is talking about the nation whom Jerusalem, the kingdom of God, would be given unto to bring forth the fruit, forth the fruits. Excuse me. All right, so here we go. Luke 20, 20, 21, 20. And when ye shall see compassed with armies, compassed, that means encircled, encircled. When ye shall see Jerusalem compassed, under siege, right? Jer Rome laid siege to Jerusalem in 70 AD. Then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. The desolation, what desolation? Remember, Jikan, I told you that the prophecy that the prophecy of desolation was given unto was given to Jerusalem. The, the city would be made desolate. Okay, here you go. That's verse one. Remember I told you I would give you the verses either yesterday night or today. Okay, so get your little pen and pad out that you use to do the math on your gas and your little groceries and whatever you write your little post-its on, on your, in, your, in your truck. Okay, so you don't forget this. Maybe you can, you, can, you can take a look at these verses and memorize them as you're driving from point A to point B. Okay, the Romans are the Yavani. Okay, the Yavani are the children from the north. Okay, they have never left the land. They've never left. Okay, <clears throat> it's just regime change. They're just a different name. Okay. All right, so. <clears throat> um, so the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains and let them which are in the midst depart out of it. He says, when you see this happening, yo, like time to hightail it. Because, you know, when an army laid siege, there's no leaving. You leave, you die. You either die or you defect. Okay. But if you stay in, you're trapped. You're going to starve. Okay. Now, now, this happened to Israel before and they did terrible things. They were selling, you know, I forgot what book. It's probably in Kings, maybe. Kings, Second Kings. Uh, I think maybe there was Babylon or maybe Assyria laid siege and they were uh, eating donkey heads and, you know, boiling their children to eat. All right. Yeah, hold your horses. Hold your horses. Just, just listen. Follow along, Laron. Follow along. Okay, don't, don't be afraid to learn something. We're going to, we're going to, so we read Matthew 21, 43. Yep. So we're going to establish what that is. We're, he, the Messiah is talking about who that nation is. Another nation will, who that nation is right now. Okay. So <clears throat> for these days be of vengeance. Okay. Talking about the day of the Lord, the time of the Lord, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days, for there should be there should be a great distress in the land, and the wrath of, and wrath upon this people, on this people Israel, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and they shall be led away captive to all nations. Okay, he's talking about this is under the Roman captivity. Remember that. They shall be led away captive to all nations. And Jerusalem will be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So you guys who like to say, oh, uh, they, did, they didn't go into slavery. Uh, you know, that was back in, you know, during the Hellenistic period, you know, but whoa, whoa. well, here you have the Messiah under the Roman captivity. <laughs> hold your horses, G-Con, hold your horses. 
<laughs> you got stuck on that one point. You cause you cause you already have your answer in your head, Gcon. Let let me tell you my answer. Okay? Just relax. All right. So so we're talking about the nation right now. That's what this is all. This this live is essentially for you, brother. So so sit tight. All right. <laughs> all right, so here we go. <clears throat> They shall fall by the sword and be led away captive into captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Let me read that again. And Jerusalem will be trodden down by the Gentiles. The Gentiles are there now until the Gentiles be fulfilled. Now, Gcon makes the mistake of thinking that the Gentiles, the time of the Gentiles, are over, and that Israel is restored. But we know that by the prophecy. We know that by the prophecy, by the, what the prophets say, Micah chapter 2, uh, verse 12 through 13, and we also will read here in the very words of the Messiah that he's going to lead. And brothers, I heard Brother Sam clearly communicate this to you. Brother Sam Addison clearly communicate this to you, Laron G. Con Campbell, that the Messiah will be the one to gather the dispersed. Okay, so... <clears throat> um. It says, so the time of the Gentiles will be, uh, they're to trod upon, the, upon Mount Zion, okay? <clears throat> and, and then it says, uh, verse 25, okay? This one is interesting, okay? And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, uh, distress of nations with perplexity. The seas and the waves roaring, okay? So, uh, yeah, he thinks that, Kaim. Um, greetings, Brother Mark Walker. Shalom. Shalom, shalom everybody, everybody that came. Thank you for, for being here. Uh, so, <clears throat> so, the signs in the sun and the moon and in the stars. You can find these prophecies in Joel, in the prophet Joel, Okay. And I believe I mentioned the prophet Joel. We'll be delving into Joel. Jeremiah and Joel are specifically the ones that are gonna really, that are really gonna shut this. Uh, they're gonna shut this uh, this this argument of G-Cons down. All right, because it's pitiful. All right, so um, so Joel talks about. It's only three chapters. You guys could probably read it as as I'm. Um, you could probably could start it and finish it by the time I end this uh, live, okay? But chapter one talks about it, it. So, so G Con, remember I told you, I'm talking directly to you, G Con. All right, remember I told you that when you read the prophets, there are running themes. So, whatever you say in, in Zacharias, it's not going to conflict. This whole idea of you only preaching from Zechariah, okay? It really shows how limited you are in your understanding of the prophets because what's in Zechariah is ta also talked about in Amos, in Joel, in Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel, and so on and so forth, okay? Remember, these are many prophets, many servants, but one owner of the vineyard, okay? So they're, 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 this message was going to all of Israel to help them, to make them repent unto the Sinai covenant law so that they wouldn't be, so that they would receive the blessings and not the curses, okay? So, and then so it also talks about um, undergoing the curses in the time of that, that Israel, like during the day of the Lord, how Israel would be judged. They would be disinherited from their land. So when you read Joel chapter one, it says all the things that the Most High is upset at. And then he says, like, uh, everything will be taken away from you. I'm going, and then in, in, and then he says, I'm going to bring an army from the north. Man, you guys, let me just go through this right now. You know what? I'll go through it when I when I cover Matt, okay? But let suffice it to say, <clears throat> suffice it to say that the signs of the sun, moon, and stars are in Joel chapter 28, 32, when the Most High is talking about what's going to happen after he pulls the this army that the Messiah is talking about from the north back out of Jerusalem, and he restores Israel. Okay? And so he's talking, this is, this is the tribulation. These are the signs of the tribulation. Now, this, the sun, moon, and stars is also mentioned in Revela Revelation 7, verses 12 through 17. Okay? Now, in these, okay, we'll, we'll just quickly go over there real quick. 
Uh, the Sixth Seal. Chapter, I'm sorry, this is chapter 6. Revelation 6, 1 through 17. Um, 12 through 17. Uh, we'll start by 13. Actually, no. Verse 12. And I beheld when, when he had opened the sixth seal, lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth, as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth, as, even as a fig tree casted, casteth her untimely figs, when she is taken of a mighty wind, and the heaven departed as a scroll, and out of every mountain and island were moved out of their places, and the kings of the earth and great men and rich men, chief captains and the mighty men, and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. Verse 16, and to the mountains and the rocks, and said to the mountains of the rocks, fall on us, hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne. And from the wrath of the Lamb. Why? Because after Israel is restored, as I told you, Jikon, then the judgments of the nations will begin. Okay? If you read Amos, if you read Micah, if you read Zechariah, if you read Ma mm, Malachi, may go into it. I don't think so. But definitely in Amos, and if you go into definitely Isaiah, okay, Isaiah 63, okay, it talks about the vengeance that will happen. Joel chapter 2, it said, you're talking to Tyre, you have sold the sons of Jacob unto the Grecians. And then it talks about the recompense that they will undergo, okay? Maybe we'll shoot over there real quick. <clears throat> okay, so in Revelations here, we have this the sign of the sun, that sun, moon, and stars that, that, that the Messiah was talking about. And this is just before what? The gathering of the 144, which starts in right after, right after these, this passage. Okay, chapter 7. And I saw four angels standing in the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, and that the wind should not blow on any earth, sea, or any tree. And I saw another, another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice unto the four angels to whom it was given, okay, <clears throat> whom it was given to hurt the earth and sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, till we have sealed the servants of, the, of, our, four, of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of Israel. These are the dispersed elect, okay? Now we're going to head back to, uh, you guys can read the the rest of that on your own. And we're going to jump back to Luke and wrap up there. And then we're going to hit up the same account. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Okay, let's see here. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Matter of fact, let me hit, let me hit Joel up real quick. That way you guys can see for yourself. So I know for some, it's a little bit, I know for myself as a young Bible reader, I was intimidated by a lot of these books. It helps to hear someone sort of lay out the map. And when you sort of hear people talk about it, it the book doesn't seem as big anymore. Okay. So Joel 2, 28 through 32. And it shall come pass to pass afterward. This is after Israel is judged. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. These are the 144 elect in the multitude. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Okay. 29. And also upon the, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids, in those days will I pour out my spirit, and I will show wonders in the heavens and earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. Now, I want to take some time in, in 29, okay? Just, just a quick second. When we think about servants and handmaids, obviously there are, you know, Israelites perhaps. Perhaps, perhaps these are all speaking of Israelites, Okay. But what if it was talking about the remnant of the, the God-fearing nations, the Gentiles? Okay, we know by, by Isaiah 56 that even those Gentiles who respect Torah will be allowed back into the... 
No, it's it's not Acts 2, Brian. It's not Acts preaches from the prophets. The prophets weren't written in light of Acts. Acts was written in light of the prophets. So it's it's not Acts it's not Acts 2. It's it's Joel. Okay? So <clears throat> but but yes, it's mentioned in Acts. It it is mentioned in Acts. And the and and the disciples know this. They know the prophecy of Joel. Because they know that it's supposed to trigger the restoration of these signs are supposed to trigger the re restoration of Israel. And they even asked the Messiah, will you now turn over the kingdom? They expected a literal Israelite kingdom to be handed over to them. Okay. Now, <clears throat> 31. No, it says verse 30. We're going to read about, we're going to see the same signs. And I will show wonders in the heavens and the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. And before the great terrible day of the Lord, before the terrible day, great day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whoever shall call on the name, on the name of the Lord, Yah, call on the name of Yahuwah, shall be delivered. For in, for in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the, the Lord hath said. And in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. What remnant? The Israelite remnant. The same Israelite remnant that's mentioned in, oh, you know what? I'm going to take it easy on you, Brian. My bad, bro. My bad. I'm going to take it easy on you because I, I, I know, I know how, I know, I know your take on this. My fault, brother. All right. So <clears throat> now I may not, I may not believe wholly, you know, but I respect that you actually, that you believe that Israel will be a nation again. My fault. Okay. As for you, G Con, you 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 keep listening. All right, so um, <clears throat> what are we gonna do next? Let's go back to let's finish up Luke. All right, so so then it says men's hearts failing them for fear and looking. So he's 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 explaining the same signs that are uh, that are um, that's that are. Um, that mark Israel's judgment, all right? Mark the time period of Israel's judgment, the, the, the signs in the heaven and earth, the disturbing signs. Men's hearts failing them for fear, and after looking, and after those things which are coming back from the earth, for the powers of heaven, the powers of heaven shall be shaken, okay? Now, verse 27, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory this is talking about is g kind of dispensationalist man then his, then his <laughs> well then why the heck do you think that the ashkenazi jews are the true children i'm just gonna keep going forward all right <sighs> wow all right so and and so the messiah Listen up, G-Con. Listen very closely because you're missing it. Really quick, G-Con. I, I, I skipped this point. So, we, so I went over the units. Really quick. I'm going to do this just for you, G-Con. And, and, and it's for the people. You're invited to do this. I made, recently made a video, a helpful video um, with some tips. We're going to get back to the scriptures in a second. But just, just you know, quick, quick commercial break right here. This video right here, if you go to the... There you are, G-Con. <laughs> no, there you are. That's a, that's a better picture. All right, so if you go to the Biblical Rumble Room on YouTube, all right, go to videos, skip past g -Con's awesome selfie right here that he took in Home Depot or something. Uh, and then if you click on this, it says, study the Bible via KJV audio stream, okay? Now, this video is um, a tip on how Oftentimes when I um, don't feel like reading or if I'm if I can't read, if I can't, if I don't you know, have the time, I'll listen to the audio on my on YouTube, on my cell phone. Like if I'm out walking my dogs, I'll listen to, you know, you know, one few days. I'll listen to Zechariah. A few days. I'll listen to Micah over and over throughout the walk or you can switch it up however you want. g -Con, you got a lot of time to listen to audio. I recommend you, you, you draw, this is my recommendation to you, G-Con. 
I recommend that you pull back on the little lives, the little half-baked, your little half-baked intellectual uh, rants, okay? And uh, focus your mind and click on YouTube and click on, you can click on this video and it'll give you, it'll offer some advice should you want to. Or you can just go straight up here and type in any old, on your cell phone, of course, in your search, type in any old, any prophetic book you want. And you listen to that prophetic book over and over. Now, what you're going to do, G-Con, what I imagine you're going to do, because you're one of those squirrely types who probably never, who probably never sat down for a long time, for a long time in, in, in class. All right. What, what I challenge you to do, G-Con, is when you click Zechariah or you click Michael or any other one of the other prophets, Ezekiel was, you were caught lacking. You press that and you don't say a thing. You don't say, oh, I know what that is. I know what that is. That's what I thought it was when I had that conversation. I don't, don't do that. No, no, no. No, 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 no. You listen to the books as if you're listening for the first time time and let the book tell you let the book tell you what it says okay <laughs> let the book tell you what it says i don't want you to make any connections just yet you listen to that book about maybe three or four or five times and you take one of those post-its that you use to calculate your gas and all your groceries and your little to-do's uh, driving across America, and I and you write down what it is Ezekiel's telling you about. You know all the salient points that stick out. You know, like Ezekiel thirty six twenty six through twenty seven. There will be their heart will be heart of stone will be taken out. They will be given a heart of flesh. <laughs> uh, they're going to, when, when they receive the spirit, they're going to walk. Take notes. Take notes. Okay. Don't tell Ezekiel what he's saying. Listen to what, because see, your challenge is listening, g -Con. I'm, I'm almost sure you got, I'm almost sure you got slapped a lot. All right. Like, let, let Ezekiel tell you the story. All right. So. That's for you, G-Con. And anybody else, you're you're welcome to to see those, to look at those videos. Um, <clears throat> uh, okay, so um, going over to going over to Matthew. Matthew, we're gonna switch to what Matthew accounts as the. Uh, what what Matthew accounted what what Christ said in that very same moment. Okay, so Matthew twenty four, fifteen through thirty five. You guys can write that down if you want, or if you can remember it. Cool. All right. <clears throat> so, and and I'm keeping the camera on this map so we can sort of keep present in our minds who's coming to in to see to put Israel under siege. Okay. Now we're gonna go. Maybe I should touch on this. Let's go look at what the Roman Empire looked at during the time of Christ. That's a that's about right. Maybe it, maybe it was this big. Maybe what I think during the time of Christ that was really the height. That was really the golden era of. So. <clears throat> so. We're talking about the Romans are going to come from the north. The Romans are going to come from the north. They got provinces. They got garrisons. They got reinforcements. They don't need to come from Rome. <laughs> All that needs to happen is a, sh a little ship with a courier carrying a general goes right here. And all these surrounding nations that Rome has influence on, they're going to say, Annie up. Because we're going to crush Jerusalem. That's all that needs to happen. It's not a little small army. It's, it's, this is an empire. Okay? 
Just send just send the boys from Asia, and we'll give we'll give these we'll give these Jews the boot. These these black Jews, okay? <clears throat> All right. So Rome is already strategically positioned to control Israel. Israel is a province of Rome, right? They're occupying Israel. Wouldn't take much. All right, so, verse 15. When ye shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in a holy place. All right, just so you don't get it twisted, don't get it misconstrued, he quotes the actual name of the prophet. The abomination of desolation. Rome, the sons of Yavani. These very same individuals that are referred to as animals in the prophets. Okay? Read Joel, the canker worm, the wolf, the beast. These beasts, you'll be ripped apart by beasts. You know, the fox, you know. Read Ezekiel 34. They are referred to as pestilence. The locust. Joel refers to them as the locusts, numerous. All right? You guys can read this easy, easy in Joel 2. Easy. G-Con. Simple as that, bro. All right? Then let them which are in Judea, okay, flee to the mountains. <clears throat> let them flee to the mountains, which is on the housetop, not come down. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe to them that are with child that give suck. Okay, so we know we're in the same account. But pray that your flight be not in winter, neither on the Sabbath day, for then shall be great. What? Tribulation. So many of you Christians, you ask what the tribulation is. Oh my God, we got to get the mark of the beast. Oh my God, my church is going to be persecuted. Oh my God. Nah, this is, I mean, maybe a few of those things, but Israel, this is about Israel. <clears throat> this is just before Israel will be regathered. <clears throat> okay. For then great... For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. I hope you're still here, G. Con. I hope you're listening. You sit, you sit, you sit nice and still. All right. Uh, verse 22. And except those days should be shortened. He, uh, and, and except those days should be shortened. There should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. 23. Then if any man shall say unto you, lo, here is the Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christ, false prophets, shall, shall show great signs. We're going skip to skip ahead to verse 29. <clears throat> All right. Verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation. What, Christians? What? What, Christians? Say it, Christians. Say it with me, Christians. Brian Garcia, Laurent Sacred. After the what? Tribulation. What? <laughs> Where's Salam? So, somebody text Salam back in here. Immedi immediately after the tribulation. This is Israel undergoing judgment immediately after the tribulation in those days shall the sun be darkened okay so we see the we see the signs in heaven that was mentioned in joel chapter 2 verse 28 to 32 and we also see it in um revelations chapter 6 verse 12 through 17 immediately after the tribulation those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven of the heavens shall be shaken Verse 30, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Not, not cities, not countries, tribes of the earth. Why? Because we're all we all come from a tribe. 
We all have a bloodline back to a fatherhead, a tribe. All the tribes of the earth shall mourn and they shall see, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Verse 31, here we go. Listen up, g -Con. This is going to tell you when the, children of when the children of promise are going to be restored. Okay, so you can let go of this, 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 this cow-ish argument, this chicken-ish argument that the Ashkenazi are the true children of Israel. 31, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds of one end of heaven to the other. Pause. <clears throat> Revelation 7, right? The gathering of the 144,000, the sealing of the elect. Is Mass Ali in here? I'll read that again. Verse 31, this is Matthew 24. And he shall send his angels, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. So, Unless the Messiahs come back, G Khan and Brian Garcy, those Ashkenazi Jews can't be the people. Let alone the fact that they celebrate LGBT pride. Let alone that they're chemically castrating their women. Is that what you think the Messiah would allow? That's what you think his millennial kingdom is about? Oh, I forgot. You guys, you guys believe, you guys don't believe in law and order. You guys don't believe in the Sinai Covenant law. You believe in the law, this law of liberty. You want this liberty. Perhaps it fits perfectly that the country, that Israel state government is celebrating LGBTQ pride. Is that your law of liberty, Laron G. Con Campbell? Is that the liberty you wanted? The law, the law of liberty you want? That the law of liberty you anticipated? Yeah, he's probably not even in here anymore. <clears throat> if he can't kick you out, he's he's not gonna stick around. Okay. All right, uh, let's see. <clears throat> so we know that those Ashkenazi aren't the people already. But just just to really um put some tools under the belts of those who are new to the truth. <clears throat> okay, so we said Ashkenazi are not the people. Well, who are they? We've sort of addressed it. Well, let's go to the prophets because the prophets mentioned it. We'll start with, uh, we'll start with, we'll start with Jeremiah because Joe, Joe's going to, uh, he's really going to pull it all together. Because Joel is the bridge. Joel is sort of our bridge between Jeremiah and Matthew and Luke. So we'll start out with Jeremiah. Jer <clears throat> so we know the context where Jeremiah received his prophecy is just before the Babylonian exile. We know that he went into the exile, as did Ezekiel. I, I, don't, I'm not, I don't know if Ezekiel went into Babylon. I think he may have went into Egypt. Somebody can correct me on that. I stand open for correction. All right, so we're going to go to Jeremiah in the very first chapter. Very right away, we understand where these Ashkenazi came from. Just, just three passages in Jeremiah we'll look at. <clears throat> Starting with Jeremiah chapter 1. 14 through 16, okay? Jeremiah 1, 14 through 16. Then the Lord said unto me, out of the north. Oh, we'll actually start, um, 
We'll start from 13. And the word of the Lord, and the word of the Lord came to, unto me a second time, saying, What seest thou? And I said, I see a seething pot, and the face thereof is toward the north. So this is a vision. Then the Lord explains the vision. He says, Out of the north an evil shall break forth upon all the ha- inhabitants of the land. Verse 15, for lo, I will, I will call all the families of the kingdoms of the north. Let's rewind that. For I will call all the families of the kingdoms of the north, saith the Lord. And they shall come and they shall set everyone his throne at the entering of the gates of Jerusalem and against the, all the walls thereof round about. They're going to encompass Jerusalem. They're going to lay siege to Jerusalem. This is what the Messiah said. This is what he said. And I will utter my judgments against them, touching all their wickedness who have forsaken me and have burned incense unto other gods and worship the works of their own hands. Okay? So he's uttering their judgments against Israel. Meaning, you know, the word of the Lord, Lord, you know, the word of the Lord is going to become action. So when, when it, you know, he decrees the deaths of men, he decrees who lives, who dies. Okay. He decrees white power, (laughs) right? As an instrument of chastisement. Yeah, absolutely. Right. All right. So. Let's keep going for it. And, and remember, keep in mind when this specific portion, this verse that says, verse 15, I will call all of the families of the north. Okay. This is the sons of Japheth, the white sons of Japheth, the Indo-Europeans. Okay. That were d- descended from the north. Gomer, Gog, Magog. Excuse me, Yavan, sons of Yavan, Tarshish, Angli, Angli. You guys know where the term England came from? There was a son of Japhet named Angli. And these languages, man. You know, the other day, quick side note, the other day I looked up online what Old English sounds like. Do you know it sounds nothing like what we speak today? Sounds nothing. All right, so so they're coming from the north. Out of the north, and evil shall break forth. Okay, second verse in Jeremiah that talks about the sons of Japheth. It's going to be Jeremiah chapter 4. <clears throat> uh, we'll start by, we'll start with verse 4. And I think it's a, it doesn't really have much to do with, it's not talking about the ch- children of the north, but. Um, the sons of the north, but it's talking. It's going to make a very uh, great point about circumcision of the heart. So I wanted to add that in. At this point, the Messiah is saying, "Hey, get it together, right? Or else, or else what'll ha- Or else I have to punish." He says, verse four: "Circumcise yourselves to the Lord, and take away the foreskins of your heart." Ye men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my fury come forth like fire and burn that none can quench it because of the evil of your doings. So before we go forward, <clears throat> circumcision of the heart, when these Christians, when these Christians try to say, oh, it's not about, you know, physical, it's about circumcision of the heart, but the law is done away with. All right. Like. Circumcision of the heart is following the commandments. This verse right here, Jeremiah 4, 4, confirms exactly how it defines circumcision of the heart in Deuteronomy chapter 10, 13 through 16. Both of, I, just, I just recently posted, about, posted it on Facebook. It was like my, my most recent post talking about circ, what is circumcision of the heart. Post that, open that up in discussion and watch Christians fall apart. <clears throat> okay, so verse five, declare ye in Judah and publish ye in Jerusalem and say, blow ye the trumpet in the land, cry, gather together and say, assemble yourselves and let us go into the defense cities. Set up a standard towards Zion. Here we go. Retire, stay not. 
for I will bring evil from the north and a great destruction. That's the same army that they're talking about, that the Messiah is talking about in Matthew 24 and Luke 20. Or Luke 21. All right, we're going to go to... Oh, look at what he says um, in verse... Oh, yeah. So we're going to verse 6. Oh, actually, no. We'll hit 16 up in verse 4, in chapter 4. Make ye mention to the nations. Behold, publish against Jerusalem that watchers come from a far country and give out their voice against the cities of Judah. As keepers of the field, they are against her round about encompassed, laid siege, because she hath been rebellious against me, saith the Lord, thy way and thy doings have procured these things unto thee. This is thy wickedness, because it is bitter, because it reaches, reacheth unto thine heart. Chapter 6. <clears throat> o ye children of Benjamin, gather together yourself to flee out of the midst of Jerusalem. Isn't that what the Messiah is saying? Flee. Don't turn back when you see these signs. Gather yourselves to flee out of the midst of Jerusalem and blow the trumpet in Tekoa and set up a sign of fire in Beth Hakarim. For evil appeareth out of the north and great destruction. I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. The shepherds with their flocks shall come unto her. They shall pitch their tents against her round about. They shall feed everyone in his place. Now, now, uh, Jikon wanted he brought up Deuteronomy fourteen and how it said I think it was fourteen one. It said the spoil will de will be divided amongst her, or within her. This is it. They shall pitch their tents around uh, against her round about. They shall feed every. They shall feed everyone in his place. Verse 4, prepare ye war against her, arise, and let us go up at noon. Woe unto us, for the day goeth away, for the shadows of the evening are stretched out. We're about to get whooped. Arise, and let us go by night, and let us destroy her places. <clears throat> oh, my bad. I interpreted that wrong. The shadows of the evening are stretched out, meaning it's almost about that time to go, uh, to go lay siege. <clears throat> All right, so again, the Most High says, in, lastly in eight, be thou instructed, O Jerusalem, lest my soul depart from thee, lest I make thee desolate. Laron, there's not gonna be, there's not gonna be any Jews. Hey, maybe here and there, you know, here, but but as far as a, uh, if you guys go back to our our, our discussion, Laron actually thinks, Jikon actually thinks there's going to be some semblance of a government functioning. But Jeremiah says I, that Elohim will make the land desolate and not inhabited. <clears throat> All right. So from there, we'll hit, <clears throat> we'll hit up Joel. Go to Joel. We just got Joel, just three passages from Joel and then a passage from Ezekiel. And then, and then that's pretty much going to wrap it up. And hopefully we never hear this, this garbage from Laurent G. Con Campbell again. That's if he watches it. <clears throat> All right, let's see. Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos. Daniel, Hosea, Joel. All right, here we go. Joel, chapter 1, 1 through 8, and then we're going to hit 15. All right, so this is going to be describing the army from the north, the same army that the Messiah <clears throat> described. All right, so here we go. The word of the Lord that came to Joel, the son of Pethuel, hear this, ye old men, and give ear, all ye inhabitants of the land. Okay, hath this been in your days or even in the days of your fathers? Tell your children of it and let your children tell their children and their children another generation. That which the palmer worm hath, palmer worm hath left, palmer worm is a form of pestilence, 
That which the palmer worm hath left, the locust eaten. And that which the locust hath left, the canker worm eaten. And that which the canker worm hath left, the caterpillar eaten. Verse, yeah, I bet. <laughs> I bet, Sterling. Verse 5. Awake, ye drunkards, and weep, and howl, all ye drinkers of, of wine, because of the new wine, for it is cut off from your mouth. For a nation, a nation is come up upon thy land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he hath the cheek teeth of a great lion. This is describing the sons of Japheth, the multitude. Okay? And keep in mind, he's calling all of the families of the north. We're going to hit up in Ezekiel real, like ju just after this. Maybe we'll jump there really quick. He hath laid my vine waste. Oh, see that? He hath laid my vine waste, Jerusalem, and barked my fig tree. He hath made it clean, bare, and cast it away. The branches thereof are made white. Verse 8, lament like a virgin, girded with sackcloth for the husband of her youth. The meat offering and the drink offering is cut off in the house of the Lord. The priests, the Lord's ministers mourn. Okay, the meat offering and drink offering is cut off. In, in, in 70 AD, they could no longer sacrifice at the temple. It was crushed. It was destroyed by Rome. It was desecrated and destroyed. <clears throat> Verse 10, the field is wasted. The land mourneth and the corn is wasted. The new wine is dried up. The oil languisheth. Verse 11, be ashamed, O ye husbandmen. Uh-oh. Here we go. We're, we're seeing that same language that the Messiah used. O ye husbandmen. And what was the connection? The husbandmen were Israel's leadership. The servants were the prophets. <clears throat> o ye vine dressers, be ashamed, O ye husbandmen. How, O ye vine, vine dressers, for the wheat and for the barley, because the harvest of the field is perished. The vine is dried up, the fig tree languisheth, the pomegranate tree and the palm tree also, and the apple tree, even all the trees of the field are withered because joy is withered away from the sons of men. All right, I don't think I was supposed to read that far, but we'll hit 15 up real quick. He says, gird yourselves and lament, ye priests, how ye ministers. He's basically calling for repentance. Sanctify a fast in verse 14. Verse 15, alas for the day, alas for the day, for the day of the Lord... Okay, tribulation, and as a destruction from the Almighty shall it come. Okay, <clears throat> now it's going to, in chapter 2, it's going to describe in more detail the, the Roman army. And you can look back in history, you can see how Rome, there was no chance, there's no chance of, of, of stopping Rome. There's no chance of defense at all. And it, the dominance is going to be communicated in chapter 2. Watch. Blow ye trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people. This is, this is the sons of Japheth, the multitude, all the families from the north. A great people and a strong there hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it. Do you know in history, these families from the north, <clears throat> they're called the White Hordes. They have names, Blue Horde, White Horde, and Golden Horde. They're like, they're like massive tribes of like warlike tribes. Keep that in mind. These, these tribes became part of the Greek Empire. They became part of the Greek Empire. All right. <clears throat> now, just to touch up really close, why, why these people are light. This people was black. These people were all black. By the time of the Greek Empire, by the time the Israelites came out of Babylon, Alexander had, had sewn all of this up. These were, this was the Greek Empire formally. Okay. This specific region where we see all the light-skinned Arabs with light with brown skin and light hair, these are a mix of the Shemitic peoples and the 
white sons of Japheth that came from the north. They're misogynized. Same thing happened in India. And, you know, Indians have an interesting story. When they talk about how these white people came in, that's when the caste system was birthed. That's when all of the crazy, like, racism started to be set up. And if you look, the if you if you understand India, the lighter peoples, the um, oh man, what is the Indian music? Crud, I can't think of it. It's a certain region, right? Like where this music comes from. But you have different types of Indians, and uh, if the name comes, Punjab, Punjab, that's this region right here. He's the lighter people that come here. And then as you go further down, these people get really dark. Sri Lankans are like, they're dark. The Andaman Islands. Actually, no, the Andaman Islands are, are over here. Uh, but these Tamil, the Tamil Indians, the black Indians, those who have connections to even um, Jewish um, heritage, Yahudim, uh, Israelite heritage, they're in this region. <clears throat> okay, this, this, this began, this, you know. It was these people migrated. Imagine all these Greek people say, hey, I'm going to go live, you know, here. This was called the Seleucid. This became after Alexander died. This became the Seleucid Empire. All of this right here. All of this. And Antioch where Antiochus Epiphanes came from to desecrate the, you know, he was here. This is like Antioch. Okay. And then here was Ptolemy. And then there was another, there's another uh, small uh, section uh, that was a fragment of Alexander's king. I think it would be, Nicanor, I think, was the ruler. Greek ruler Nicanor. But these are all Greek kingdoms that came about after, the, you know, conquered by Alexander, but remained in Greek power after Alexander. So they ruled here in, for centuries. And they mixed in with the people. <clears throat> so that's why these people are light. Now, you can see all of that when you go to the units. All right. The units in the rumble room. And you'll be able to understand why, how those people migrated and how they got there. All right. All right, so let's uh let's wrap it. Let's wrap it up. All right, so <clears throat> Joel 2. A fire, okay, so it's talking is describing the people. The appearance of them, verse 4, is like the appearance of horses as horsemen, so shall they run. The noise of chariots and the tops of mountains shall they leap like the noise of flame of fire that devoureth the stubble as a strong people set in battle array. Before their people, before their face shall People shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. And they shall march everyone in his ways. They shall not break their ranks. Neither shall they thrust one another. They shall walk everyone upon his path. This is describing the sons of Japhet here. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. They shall run to and fro in the city. And run upon the wall, and they shall climb upon the houses, and they shall enter at the windows like a thief. All right, so, so we'll fast forward to the place where um, Elohim turns his judgment. 18. Then the Lord will be jealous for his land and pity his people. 19. The Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen, but I will remove far off from you the northern army. Okay, so when we think about when the Messiah was talking about restoration. Okay, I will remove from you off from, off from you the northern army. And I will drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face, face toward the east and his hinder parts toward the utmost sea. And his stink shall come up. And his ill savers shall come up because he hath done great things, wicked things. Okay. Um, so let me hit up Ezekiel really quick. We're going to talk about 
um, <clears throat> what's going to happen to these to this multitude. In Ezekiel thirty nine, it specifically deals with the with the um, with Gog. Now, now listen to this. Like, keep in mind Ezekiel. I'm sorry, Isaiah sixty three. Okay, where the Messiah, his robe is dipped in blood. Think about the Supper of the Kings in Revelations. I forgot what chapter it is. I want to say, uh, is it 19? All right. <clears throat> Supper of the Kings where the fowl is, the, their, their flesh is fed to the fowls of the air. Okay. 39. I hope you're listening, g -Con. 39.1. Therefore, thou son of man, prophesy against Gog and say, thus saith the Lord God. Okay, just for context, this is just after 37 and 36, the restoration. Therefore, son of man, say, prophesy against Gog and say, thus saith the Lord. Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, sons of Japhet. And I will turn thee back. And I will turn thee back. This is the northern army here. And leave but the sixth part of thee, and I will cause thee to come up from the north parts and will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. And I will smite thy bow out of thy left hand, and I will cause thine arrows to fall out of thy right hand. Thou shalt fall upon the mountains of Israel, thou and all thy bands, and the, and the people that is with thee, I will give unto the ravenous birds of every sort. And to the beasts of the field to be devoured. Verse 5. Thou shalt fall upon the open field, for I have spoken it. This is a judgment uttered, saith the Lord God. And I will send fire on Magog. And among them that dwell carelessly in the isles, and they shall know that I am the Lord. So I, so will I make my holy name known in the midst of my people, Yasharala. And I will not let them pollute my holy name anymore. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. Okay? Now... <clears throat> We can go to Jeremiah 31 and it essentially says the same things. And we know that these Christians, they like to, you know, they like to use Jeremiah 31 to say that the new covenant is here. Uh, but Jeremiah says, essentially, it, said, it sums it up in a nutshell. I'll just give you a snippet and then we'll close out. <clears throat> um this is just after, this is in 31, just towards the end of the, of the, uh, this is towards the end of the chapter of 31. Okay, it's talking about the restoration of the city. And the measuring line shall yet go forth over against it upon the hill of Garib, and shall compass about to Goeth. And the whole valley of dead bodies and of the ashes and all the fields unto the brook of Kidron, unto the corner of the horse gate, toward the east, shall be holy unto the Lord. It shall not be plucked up nor thrown down anymore forever. Okay? So, <clears throat> so hopefully, so we've gone through all these scriptures. We've gone through um, the books of the prophets, which anchor uh, all the things that are taught in the uh, New Testament. Um, specifically, the Messiah. What the we know the Messiah taught from the prophets, and so we can go to the prophets and understand what the Messiah was talking about. And so, um, <clears throat> this whole video was to address uh, the idea of the Ashkenazim not being the true children of Israel, but being sons of Japhet that are tr uh, trotting upon Jerusalem until their time is fulfilled, uh, and they are removed from the land of Yasharala. Uh, you guys feel free to watch this video as many times as you like. Um, I hope there's lots of information here that'll sort of put some tools in your belt so you can re really take these Christians apart. It's only a matter of time today. They're not even going to want to talk to us anymore. All right. So I hope you guys have a, a blessed evening um, and I will see you next time. Peace, light and shalom.